Welcome back guys to the Orlando Huskies uh, franchise and we got a similar video to the buy video and we're going to be checking out the stats, the roster, we'll check out the playoff bracket. As you can see the Steelers and the Vikings are in the Super Bowl. Um, the Chiefs got upset by the Bengals. Titans beat the Jags. Steelers blew out the Broncos. I kind of figured this, the Broncos were a fluke. But then the Steelers blew out the Jags. The Bills beat the Bengals. Steelers beat the Bills. And then the Vikings and Steelers will play in the Super Bowl. As for the NFC, the Vikings went as a three seed, beat the two, dominated the two seed. Ended up eventually beating the one seed to make the Super Bowl. And that will be the Super Bowl matchup, the Steelers and the Vikings. We'll check out stats, awards, everything like that. We'll go with the awards first. Awards. Cole Oberg is the MVP from the Bills. Jack Parker, coach of the year for the the um, Jaguars. Cole, Cole Oberg, offensive player of the year for the Bills as well. Defensive player of the year, Brian Hagtelling. From the Patriots. Don't know how to pronounce that one. And then look at here. Drew Stevens. Rookie of the year. Drew Stevens from the Orlando Huskies. Number two. Hunter Purcell. You love to see that. Great seasons from both of them. And then Jared Phillips. Just beat out Shane for rookie of the year. And all the way at the bottom you see CJ Hunter right there. At number 10. But Shane just got beat out by Jared Phillips, Phelps. And now we'll go on to the stats. As Josh had 3,352 yards, 10 touchdowns, 23 picks, a 43% completion percentage, and a 51.7 passer rating. And the only other QB to play, Jay Keaton, 142 yards, one pick, four or one touchdown, four picks, 41% completion percentage, 28.8 passer rating. Josh was sacked 57 times. But the rookie of the year, look at this. 218 attempts, 1,106 yards, and 10 touchdowns. Averaging 5.1 yards per carry. Josh also decent on the ground. 145 on 24 attempts. One touchdown, 6 yards per carry. And 100 per cell. 74 catches. 1,073 yards, 5 touchdowns. Great. Love to see that. Simmons, second on the team in yards with 503. 2 touchdowns. Jamal Lacey, 454. This is shocking. Jason Blacklock, 31. 446, 1 touchdown. And look at the snaps. If he... He was on pace for almost 1,000 yards. If he would have been the full-time starter all year... He probably would have got over a thousand yards. Drew Stevens, just a phenomenal year for Drew Stevens. 40, 426 yards, two receiving touchdowns. And then you have Damian Harrison. He also didn't play as much as Jamal Lacey. Jamal basically doubled his, his snaps. And that might change a little bit more. We saw more of Damian later on in the season. 323, one touchdown. And then this man. Connor Kelly, 66 receiving yards on nine catches. We're going to see a little bit more of him next season. We're not going to look at blocking. Luke Calhoun, 16 sacks allowed. Jesus. Tackles, Shane led the team in tackles with 106. Johnson with 101. 84 for Wilcox, 82 for Dylan, 75 for Gage, 62 for Justin Martinez. Tackles for loss now. Johnson, 101 with tackles and 8 tackles for loss. Wiggins with 8 tackles for loss. 6 for Barry Wilcox, eight, 5 for Car Carrington, 4 for Russell Wilcox, 4 for CJ Hunter. CJ had 23 tackles, 4 tackles for loss. Shane with 3, Justin with 3. And now... Sacks on the season. This has to change. Not enough sacks on the season. 
with Ralph Wiggins leading the team with four, CJ Hunter with three, Tavon Johnson with two, Barry Wilcox two, a bunch of twos down here, Caden with two. Shocking Carrington didn't have one. He was a monster getting pressures up the middle. Shane O'Neal, two picks. Dylan Flock, two picks. The only four picks on the season will go to both of those. Deflections. Dylan Flock with three. Gage with three. Shane with two. Two for Wiggins. Two for Justin Martinez. That's about it. Force fumbles. We force a lot of fumbles. Gage with three on the season. Wilcox with two. CJ Hunter, two strip sacks on the season. Flock with two. Shane with one. Justin with one. Now fumble recoveries. Out of all of those, we only recovered four. That that also is gonna have to change. That's gonna have to change. But though that that are the set, those are the stats for the 2023 Orlando. Or we are not in 2023. <laughs> um, for the 2043 Orlando Huskies. And. We'll look at the roster a little bit. As you can see, this will not be the team going into next year. There will be a lot of changes made on this roster. Especially with this unit right here. This this unit will not be the same. Well, there will be a lot of new names on this team next season as most of the offense line are free agents starting right tackle starting guard Connor Kelly's a free agent he's asking for a lot of money three a year is a lot of money Justin Martinez declined our offer but we will go after him in free agency, if he's not too expensive, Lynch could be a re-signed guy. David Long will not be re-signed. A lot Calhoun, Jeff, both of them will not be re-signed. We've been negotiating with Barry. We want him back. He, he was a good filler, backup type of player. And Trevor Carrington, that's going to be a big option. And when that time comes, we will make that decision. We'll go over scouting a little bit, and then we'll go on our way. But mock drafts, which one are we at? We're at two. It has us as the number two overall pick, but we are the number one overall pick. And the quarterbacks, after scouting them, aren't too great. We have our favorite guys. And you're going to see a lot of offensive linemen, a couple of DBs, a couple of late round QBs. And we are looking for a scat back slash like receiving type back to give Drew Stevens a break. We don't want to wear him into the ground too, too often. But those are our favorite type of guys, right? Those are the guys we're favoriting right now as we just don't really see... We don't know what we're going to do at quarterback. Obviously, we have the number one overall pick. We could take anybody we want. Receiver is definitely a need. Um, I don't think it's a big need. I think it's a free agency type of fix rather than an offensive line fix or a draft fix. But we have our guys that we want. We're looking for zone type of linebackers as you can see Michael Wade a B zone later projection in the draft and that could be that could really fit us well and it's free safety Russell Wilcox can he move down to a slot corner and can we get someone over the top who's a little bit faster and as you can see we have a couple favorites of free safety as we're looking for someone a little bit faster and we can even do the same with strong safety as we haven't really looked at strong safety with Shane but we could move Shane down to the slot corner and have somebody else come in at strong safety and as Shane was a great player coming in I'm at 
we didn't expect a lot, but he came and provided a lot for us. But that's it. Just a short little video, and we'll get going with the off season soon. But I do want to know your guys' opinions on what I should do in the off season? What you guys think I should do? If you guys want a new quarterback, if you want new receivers, like you guys got to let me know what you guys want and think this team needs and should do going into next, going into the off season. And I'll see you guys then. Peace.